Hi, my name is Dr. Ray Tahiri. Today we are here to have a quick presentation on how to polish and etch samples. Uh, first of all, I would like to give you a little brief of how to use microscopes. What we have here is already fairly polished specimen. When you have this specimen and you want to look at the microscope, the first thing is try to look at the lowest magnification to find the adjustment. So as we have here in the computer, so assuming that I'm in kind of off focus, I try to bring down the lens until I increase the intensity of the light and you can see that now it's getting better. So this is the specimen. A polished specimen looks something like this. So we won't be able to see any grain boundary unless we etch the samples. And what I mean by etching the sample is meaning uh, to introduce a mild corrosive liquid which is mild enough to do not corrode and oxidize the grain, but corrosive enough to oxidize the grain boundary, the areas that are higher energy and are more susceptible for corrosion. And then we will be able to see actual the grain boundaries. So a polished specimen does not look anything except some uh, scratches. Now, I would like to polish this specimen a little more. What I have here is a polishing wheel, and the first step is when you make the specimen, so you have to grind it. So you use some tools, you know, perhaps friction saw, whatever, you make the specimen, and then you use various grid of emery papers. So this is very coarse, 120, and then you do 120, 240, 320, 400, and then 600, which is uh, the smoothest surface. And after this, hopefully you have removed all the scratches. The next step will be polishing the surface. For that, you will using this pad, and then you add some of these liquids, which is diamond paste, could be six micron or could be one micron, and then the specimen would be polished. So this is what I'm demonstrating here with my tie and suit. Hopefully it's not gonna get messed. Uh, I have some of these chemicals here. So my hands are clean, make sure your hands are clean because debris on your hands are uh, going to be affecting the polishing disc. Uh, with a clean hand, I would like to spread these chemicals. I go to the low, uh, re remove my rings too. Uh, with the low uh, speed, I just spread this slightly on the surface of this polishing disc. Okay, now that's good. Then I have the specimen. The proper way of holding the specimen, and that this is what I recommend you is, you're holding it with one hand, with three fingers, and then you use the thumb of the other finger to provide a continuous and consistent load. So this is what we do here. And as you notice, I'm gonna start from the center, which has the lowest angular velocity, Make sure safety is first. This is rotating several hundred RPM. If by anyhow I lose this specimen, the first thing you do before thinking about taking it out, you stop the polishing wheel. So I'm here in the center, and slowly, as I feel comfortable enough, I come and I go to our, the circumference. And I hold it very gentle, uh, low. You don't have to press it too much. This would be sufficient for removing some superficial scratches. And then you can also rotate this. If you feel more comfortable, then of course you go higher RPM and it's going to be faster, but of course you may lose the specimen easier. When you're doing it for several times, you will feel more comfortable. Okay. And then you have to wash the specimen. Uh, do you have some water? Oh, this guy. Remove this one. We do not have actually a proper methodology lab here. Uh, at this stage, I have to use some soap and then water, then methanol, then uh, use the air blower. But you don't have this for me as well. Just use water and then 
Do we have uh, Alex? That's very kind of lens-free. Uh, yes. So now that I polished the samples, as you can see, the sample has less superficial scratches. I am at uh, 40 magnification here, and I'm just going to focus a little bit more. Yes, from here, and then I'll go a little bit. Maybe in, I find a spot that has less scratches. Now I crank up to 400 magnification. Sure. So now what we have here is uh, a higher magnification, 400. So we have to be careful that we don't damage the lens because we are just about the focusing point. And there we go. Here we focus. So now this is the surface you will see in a polished specimen. There is no grain boundary and there is uh, no uh, structure. So the next step is I have to edge the sample and for this reason I'm using Nitol 5%. This is a typical metallography etchant. So this has 5% nitric acid and the remaining is methanol. So what I would like to do is just uh, introduce the surface with this uh, for a few seconds and this is a kind of like an art. You don't know how long it should take between maybe one second to twenty seconds. You keep doing try and error. So you introduce the edge into the surface for a few seconds, then you wash it, use the alcohol to dry it, and then you look at it under microscope. If you see any grains, then it's good. Either the grains are under edge or over edge or they're perfect. So it depends on where you are. And I'm gonna do all three just to show you as a demonstration and then I do completely over edge and you will see there is no grain because everything, uh, the surface of the grain boundaries and the grain, they both are completely oxidized and etched and everything is black. Uh, the general misconception among the student is that when you see something is darker, they think this is a uh, uh, phase with more carbon, but this is not correct. We don't see carbon here, we only see grain boundaries. And the fact that we see perlite as a grain which is darker is because perlite has a lamellar structure, has more grain boundary. The more grain boundary, the more susceptible to corrosion. As a result, it will be darker. Okay, so I have this nitro. I would like to wear gloves uh, here. And this is 95% uh, alcohol, so by no means it's very corrosive. So, but still, I'd like to use gloves and uh, goggles. So, here is. So now we have a polished specimen. What I do, I simply use this Q-tip. I soak it this etchant, and if I can ask uh, Sir Russell to bring it close. So you see, as soon as I introduce this etchant to the surface, it's going to get a little bit of, uh, it's like a glossy and shiny, become a little matte. And this is relatively strong etchant, so I could have used 2% nitol, but it's going to take longer, so we don't have time. And I do it for only a couple of seconds. Ready? Yeah. And then already it's getting darker, so here we go. So then I use alcohol here to remove all the debris and now I'm going to look at this under microscope and I see if I can recognize any grain boundaries. So leave it here. You can see that these are the grain boundaries. <clears throat> so what we have here now, we have perlite, these areas, and then of course the other ones are the grains are ferrite. And this is perfect. So if I had a higher magnification, I could have focused on these darker uh, grains, and you would have seen the actual lamellar structure. 
but of course this is as far as it goes, I guess it goes to 400. Just for the sake of this uh, training purpose, I would like to have one more sample and I over etch it. So I want to etch it more than that I have to, and you will see those white ferrite grains, due to the fact that it's over etched, they also become dark. And for doing that, I pick another specimen here, so it's perfectly polished, and I clean the surface, the alcohol, I use this hair blower to dry it, and now I have this nitol, And instead of a few seconds, I go maybe 15, 20 seconds, and you will see the this coloration. So get this color. Maybe I use a little more. Again, this is only for uh, the sake of training purpose. So. So I'm going to specimen most probably now just about to be over etched. And because of that, perhaps you will see much more uh, the darker grains than what you saw in the previous one. Let's try that and see if this is happening or not. So use the same procedure, it's just about the repetition. This is not, still is not bad, but you see, even uh, the ferrite is still inside getting a little darker, so it's not as, uh, I can see it clearly here actually, the even surface of the ferrite are getting etched, and you can see for example here, you will have, although it's ferrite, supposed to be bright and light, is getting more corroded. And if I would have continued for about a minute, perhaps, everything would have been completely dark. And that's why it would have been no good. On the other hand, if you would have used it the other way, a very uh, short amount of time, perhaps that would have been the only thing you would see as paralyzed, very, very yellowish brown color. So that's, I guess, everything about you have to know about etching for different uh, materials use different etching. This nitol 5% is typical etching for ferrous alloy, but if you uh, mostly plain carbon steel alloy, if you have more alloying element, goes to stainless steels and goes to higher nickel alloys, you have to use different etchings. Uh, so this all the informations are available commercially and also in metal handbooks. Thank you very much.